ocean in the denim, got a surfboard. Yeah, I see the truth in the fuck. I see the root of the cuss. Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of On That Note with Parker Whirling. I'm your host, Parker Whirling. And this is a new podcast I've started that's really going to be focusing on having conversations with artists and musicians and really whoever I find inspiring. I kind of started this because I really felt like I could talk with anybody about music for an incredibly long time and not feel bored at all. So if you're that kind of person as well, I think this is the podcast for you. Our very special first guest for today is my friend Ethan Ardalan. He's a rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, director, screenplay writer. He's everything. He's got an amazing skill set. He's an amazing person. And uh, I'm so excited for all of you to get to know him. Get back on Zoom. <laughs> What's hey, up, that's bro? a good setup. You look good. Thank you, man. And yeah, I was, of course. I was trying to make sure the, the mic was right and everything, like not in the face, like trying to get a nice. It's all about the placement, man. So, <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm, I was like, I was mid nap like an hour ago. So then I got up. I was like, okay, you got to get that, some energy, right? Because I got to start talking on the podcast and everything. I was, I'm excited, bro. I'm yeah. Good. You got that, that uh, post nap uh, glow up going on. I know. I got that glove. I put a little makeup on before the podcast. Hey, hey same here, bro. You got like to. A full makeup team, like in the other room, like waiting. I was like, come on. Yeah, guys. right. They're like, all right, quiet on set. <laughs> on call. Well, I'll start it off, man, because I've been following you and I know that you just graduated uh, from Vancouver Film School, right? That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much, bro. I'm glad yeah. you made it back to the US before things started shutting down. No, oh, man. Well, I mean, it's not like it wasn't really a choice. I kind of got I kind of got stuck here, bro. Right. I, <laughs> well, how did the uh, your time at film school kind of influence your music and how you've been making music? Yeah. So, the, I mean, the thing about being in like that environment, um, just like being in film school and kind of going into that atmosphere like every day, it was such an amazing like um, experience because everybody's creatives, you know, so as soon as you step into that school everyone is working on a project everyone is working on something so that energy is like um infectious you know like it's inspiring because when you walk in you see people working hard people are trying to plan schedule um and everyone was creating films but either way just kind of the momentum and kind of um i don't know just it's gonna sound totally like like i know everyone has different opinions. I like vibrations though like you know what i'm saying the vibration there was really high um and and inspiring just constantly being around people who had all these just be constantly on a daily basis being around talented and creative individuals was inspiring in itself. So every day I would wake up kind of with, um, with a purpose and like, you know what I'm saying? Being able to call someone up and being able to put a whole film crew together um, and just kind of learning the process of what it takes to actually make a film definitely. And like how you have to be organized can um, sprinkle into the music too. And the music process, you know, trying to be organized because I feel like it's 50 50 right like 50 percent is being creative the other 50 is being able to organize your ideas and kind of package it and make it a project and um and be strategic about it rather than trying to lay out all of these ideas and kind of making it this big mess you need to be able to make that mess into like a a painting or for what i was doing the past year a film but now i'm trying to do it with music to make it into an album and um and into like another project that a film that correlates with album. just like big you know you you, I feel like I learned how to be more um, strategic and, and structured in my creativity. Definitely. That's the, that's the biggest thing I took away from it. That's so cool, man. I definitely agree with you when it comes to doing films. There's a lot more need for that organization to keep things moving along. You know, when you're doing music, it can be a little bit more free flowy. Um, but when you're, got a whole film crew together you got to make sure everybody's arriving on time everybody knows their lines it's a lot more to deal with i think um but what you said about inspiration i think is so true too being surrounded by all those people who uh, also have similar aspirations and similar goals and want to help you get there uh, that's such a great environment to be in yeah no 100 percent, and um and like what you said about the whole film process and having a film crew and, you know, call times and making the call sheets and kind of like having to um, take care of a whole group of people like, you know, like 
they're obviously the big film sets like the big budget ones are like hundreds and thousands of, like of people but um but like you know in my case it was like just kind of trying to run a set of like 30 people you know what i'm saying that is totally different from going into a studio session with one person and you know creating a a song you know so and it a, takes a lot more prep um but yeah definitely it, i learned so much honestly and i feel like i grew the most professionally over the year for sure because before that i feel like i went in kind of um younger i felt like i came in young and i came out a little more like seasoned you know like i'm a seasoned more of a seasoned creative definitely, definitely. right yeah i mean you directed your film das Clyde, right mm -hmm. das Clyde. das <laughs> yeah. Clyde. ah i was really <laughs> the german in me is embarrassed i didn't get that right yeah no no, <laughs> no yeah um I, yeah, I produced and directed it um such a learning experience that was crazy man i got i got the script from a writer that was at my school actually cynthia um shout out cynthia thank you so much um and i took that and then yeah we, we made the film it was like two months or two three months of pre-production and then we went into production for like three days and then post-production was like four months or something but um just finishing that man that was the most oh man i can't even explain that feeling when you're prepping so hard for like just two days it was a two-day shoot we're just prepping so hard for like two days worth of shooting, but it takes like two months to get clearances and get all this stuff and all of these steps kind of um, uh, and the producing kind of process of trying to make sure that everything was cleared. And just that whole experience was the most, um, it was really special and it grew me so much because that was a lot of stress. That was a lot of pressure. Um, and on top of that, because prior to that, whenever I would create something or, or, um, you know, a song, a film, whatever it may be, there was not really a lot of pressure to it. It was more so like, okay, you know what? I'm doing this for fun. I love doing this. Uh, when it came to Das Clyde, it was like, I had put out that promo video so people could donate money to it. Um, you know, and a lot of people kind of knew that I was doing this and people had put their own money towards it kind of to support me. Um, so during that whole process, whenever I would feel like giving up or like, oh God, this is just too much pressure, like having to do a whole bunch of this paperwork and everything um i would think back to like oh my god but people kind of like are putting people put money towards this people are expecting something so it added like this different kind of pressure um to the process and it was it was definitely gave me some thick skin and it grew me a lot but um the film did well and i'm really happy about that and it was a growing experience i'm just excited for the for the next one i want to just keep it made me hungry to keep on creating more you know more films and and more music and it's a process right now it's hard but but we're getting there, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, it did do well. It won an award, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won. Um, we we got it. We definitely got a handful of selections. Um, we took home a couple of awards. Definitely, it was it, it was a great feeling. But, um, yeah, I, I was definitely proud of it. I was definitely proud of it. But I tried to um just also stay like I feel like it's really easy to get. What what is what am I looking for? Like it's easy to get in your head with it and stuff, but I just want to just keep it moving. I feel good about it. I'm happy we got selections, um, but you always feel like you can do better. You know what I'm saying? Like I always felt like even after we finished the film, before we even submitted it to festivals, I felt like ah, I wish we would have shot that different. I wish we would have did that different. Like there's always things you want to go back, and you're never satisfied. I mean, I'm sure like you know with like the music and stuff i'm sure you sit on songs for like a minute right and you're like i don't know go back and then give up and then come back it's like a whole it's a whole grueling process sometimes when like you're you're att that attached to a piece of work you know right it can absolutely be uh like just so stressful dealing with what you even think is good anymore you know like if you work on something for months there's going to be so many moments in that period of time where you're like, is this even worth it? Like, it's, is it, do I, is, am I the only one that's going to think this is cool? You know? So I, I totally understand like when something's going to take a long time, it can make you go crazy, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. I remember you had those songs too. You showed me and everything. I remember you like, Ethan, what do you think? Like, um, and I remember really relating to that. Cause I was like, man, I've been sitting on so many songs too, like that. I don't know that eventually become, stale to me you know what i'm saying like they'll become stale to me personally but i don't know if i put them out now that they would sound stale to someone who's hearing it for the first time you know right that's such a perfect transition because i wanted to ask you about uh your song baby girl uh i just that's probably my favorite song of yours and i was really going through your discography on soundcloud yesterday 
And it's so much different than the rest of the stuff you've done. Like, how did you come about that vibe? Like what made you want to really shift gears there? Um, yeah, you see, the funny thing is like prior to that, I was always, I do like rap music, right? So I rap and I'm rapping over like, um, kind of like, you know, club type beats, like, you know, just like fun stuff. Uh, but my heart has always been in like lo-fi, that lo-fi type vibe, everything, even all the way back to like, well, I started making music in 2014. Um, that's what I kind of started getting into. Like my biggest influences to start making music was like Jay Dilla, like Ninth Wonder, like all of those, like, um, it's not necessarily lo-fi, but it's just like organic, like, I can't even. I don't know. I'm I'm blanking on the the name of like the genre that they're in, but it was like it was just classic, you know. It was underground, like that. Really, like it was super vibey, spacey kind of. But then some. I love the soulful type things, samples, all that. Um, but when Baby Girl, I remember I was listening because I just I like to listen to like beat tapes, like just like beat tapes that like are like underground beat makers, like lo-fi type. And I just played in my car, and then I remember that beat came on. And I was actually coming home from school. And I remember I was really, I was really anxious about something. I was really anxious and it was just totally like fucking up my day. I was like driving in the car and I was just, I was, I forgot what I was. I was just having a really bad day and that beat came on. And then the first thing, like I just started kind of freestyling because I freestyle. And then the first thing that kind of came to me was like, and I remember I was like, Oh my God. Like, I remember being surprised myself because I don't sing. I mean, I try, I want to sing. I want to start getting into singing. But um, in that moment, I remember I was really soft. I was like, life move fast, but I want to spend it with my, and I kept on doing that. And, um, and I was on the way home and it was like a 45, 50 minute drive home. Um, and I didn't write any of it down. I just kind of, I kept on piecing together while I was driving home, like with the beat. I was like, life move fast, but I don't know. And then I kept on going back and then piecing it. Um, and then I came back here and then I took the beat on and then I just, I just went in and I looped the beat. Um, I looped the entire beat and I remember, and I had the whole song cause it was like a minute and a half. So I knew like all the sex, let me move fast, baby, da, da, da. Um, I went in and I just looped it and I kept on doing takes like really soft takes. Like on like, let move fast, baby. And then I would layer it. And then I remember like, I did like 10 takes and I layered it. Um, and then I played it and it sounded good. I was like, like, I, you, know, you know that moment. I mean, you're an artist. You know that moment when you make something and you're like, oh, my God, yes. Like, you get excited. Yeah. Like, it sounds like really everything good. just, like, all of a sudden it's there in front of you, what you've yeah. been wanting to make. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's literally it, – and that's, like, a rare occasion, too, I feel sometimes, because you have the idea in your head, but it doesn't always come out. It doesn't always come out how you want it to come out, you know? But for that particular song, like, as soon as I made it, I was like, fuck. I was like, this is, this is exactly how I imagined it. Um, and I, and I held on to it again, like what I was talking about earlier. Like I held on to it for like a month, two months. And I remember I played it for my brother and he was like, bro, just put it out. He's like, what, why are you like, just like, stop fucking thinking about it, bro. Just put it out. And I was like, okay, you're right. And I put it out, I made a little promo thing. And then, um, and then it caught a little bit of like some traction on SoundCloud. Like that's one of the few that on my SoundCloud that caught like some fire. Um, one of the few, man, you got like a bunch that's got thousands and thousands of plays. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to go bigger, though. Like, that was one of the ones that got, like, yeah, like, over 10,000. So that one that one was definitely a, a more successful one out of mine. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, was, it was definitely, like, it was, it was really, like, a quick, organic creation. It was, like, just on the day, on the spot, like, in a matter of, like, four to five hours. And that's when the best shit comes out, bro, every fucking time. Every time it's, like, one to two hours, you got, like, a really good song. If you just don't put too much um, thought into it, sometimes it's the way to go creatively it'll just happen like organically and where you don't even have to think about it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes that really is the best way to go about it instead of overthinking it and trying to like really make it something that it's not you know exactly i mean because yeah you get caught up in what are people going to think of this who's going to listen to this like are they going to like it but it goes back to like that classic motto of uh creative like if you like it, put it out. If you, all that matters is if it, if you like it. And like, yeah. sometimes it should be. It's a me cliche, off. but it's true, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's funny, man. Um, I also wanted to ask you about. I don't know how to pronounce it because it's all caps and there's no spaces. But is it boss high or boshi? 
Yeah, yeah, it's Bashi. Ba, it's like ba- ba- oh, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. That's Bashi. another one I had never heard until yesterday when I was really going through your stuff. And I was like, this has been out for two years. How did I not hear it? It might be my yeah, second like favorite. Them. Yeah, I love it. The violin sample is great. Who produced that? Uh, this dude named Jaden Kamstra. That was one another one of those like lo-fi type things. Because, wh- bro, I go through these phases where I work with a certain pro- – I work with this producer named Wolf uh, most of the time, which produced a lot of my stuff. Um, but then, of course, I still – I've been working with Ricky and – No know, one else but Rico. Shout out. Rico, shout out my boy. I love you, bro. That's why uh, we know each other. Yeah, yeah. That's how we connected. Yeah. Uh, with Miles and everything, too. Um, but, yeah, Bashi came from – Bro, sometimes I'll just go through these phases where I just like to like record verses and I don't want to like have to get a beat from someone all the time and kind of just do that. So Basha came from like another one of those beat tapes like Basha and Baby Girl. Those were from these producers that put out these like lo-fi beat tapes and I just took the beat and I just put it on there. And then I emailed him. I was like, yo, can I use it? And he was like, yeah, it's fine, bro. He's like, don't even worry. And then and it was just hey, like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's sick, man. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. <laughs> that's what my dad taught me so you just go that. for it yeah yeah just 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 clear it up make sure it's cool and with the baby girl one too the dude actually um gave me like he let me put it on spotify which was cool so i was happy about that dude that's incredible is there anything you're focusing on for 2020 music mm. film a combination of the two staying alive bro that's what i'm focusing. <laughs> just kidding um yeah i'm definitely trying to focus on putting together some um i'm trying to write a few scripts obviously you know i'm trying to it's just hard to find the momentum and the inspiration right now like i think everybody's kind of going through that especially with the state of every, like everything happening it's, it's kind of hard to um find that inspiration to just kind of catch some like my fire you know i'm trying to look for the fire right now and and um i just feel like being here too every day has been hard because i'm trying to i'm trying to mix up my daily routine to get some inspiration but Definitely, um, I'm I'm trying to put together a, a project, trying to organize some tracks. I'm gonna put out like a an album, hopefully correlating with like a a story and like a short film. That's that's my goal is to put the short film and the album out together as like a joint unit, um, and kind of change the alias, change the name, go under like a new brand and everything. I'm trying to plan all that out. So I've been I've been behind the scenes, kind of trying to um, orchestrate the next the next step, you know possibly a whole new ethan ardalan i know man it might not even be ethan ardalan anymore might not it might not be i'm gonna change the name i think i'm gonna change the name i don't know right now though i'm trying to just keep it on the dl let the energy kind of build up i'm impregnated with the idea so impregnated uh, great word for that yeah i'm impregnated that's how i feel like the idea is like you're having them as your baby you know like i can't show you yet but like once that once it's birth once it's ready exactly yeah it's brewing right now i mean all right, well, I guess it's time for the fast five. I'm going to ask you five hey, questions. Hey. Yeah, let's get yeah. it rolling. Uh, just going to be a quick, quick five. Just answer the mm. question and answer why you feel that way. Okay. Uh, we'll start off with the first one. Lyrics or beat, what comes first? Beat, for sure. Beat. beat. First, yeah, I think the beat is the most important thing because it's like the vibe. It's where, which way are you going? I feel like it's the beginning of the of the idea, it's like, okay, where am I gonna take this? Is this gonna be a banger? Is this gonna be a soft love song? You know, is this gonna be a really introspective thing about my own life? Or am I gonna yeah. like kill some people? It know? sets the tone, man. I feel the same way. Yeah, I told Beat. All right, Beat, right on. Dream artist to work with. I know I saw this one, yeah. Damn. Honestly, this is gonna sound funny, but Claro, man, I love Claro. No. I love Claro so much. That'd be dope if I could get on like one of those like, Claro songs that'd be a dream definitely Claro sick she's got a very good sultry vibe to her yeah I love her I love her man well what are you listening to right now uh, um damn what am I listening to right now Ugh, not my phone um oh my god I'm blanking oh I, be, I love this one song um what's his name Bakar Helen Back me and you went to hell and back just to find peace. Do you know that one? I don't. I send that to you. You'll love that song. Please bro. send it. Um, but I've been kind of like on that vibe. Um, damn. I honestly more recently I went through a boogie phase again. Like I, I love it. A boogie so He's much. On the a boogie phase. I was on the a boogie phase. Um, I was listening to Tom Mish. Tom Mish, the 
I wish you know. Very I, I smooth. Like, yeah, that smooth shit. Like, I mean, honestly, my right, like, bro, like, my, I don't have like a, a single. Oh, that's what I'm listening to right now. You got me. Jesus is King by Kanye. Really? Bro, that, that's no. That's what I'm. That's my answer. Okay. Like, I've been bumping that like 24 seven. When I first heard it, I was kind of like, um. I was kind of like, ah, like back in November, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it, but I was driving. And this is a funny story. It's two seconds, two seconds story. I was driving in the car and I was listening to Salah. Uh, is that Salah? I don't know how to say it, but um, Salah by Kanye. And it has, I don't know if you've heard it. Have you heard it? I have. Yeah. I heard Jesus is King, like when it came out, but I haven't really played it much since. Yeah. But I'm telling you, go listen to Salah again. He's like, I mean, I'm just focused. And then there's like the choir comes in bro, and they're like, hallelujah, hallelujah 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 and bro like i was driving and i shit you not i was i fucking was started crying like crazy i was like bro i started bawling like a motherfucker i was driving bringing the tears on it was literally like just it was hitting me so deep i couldn't even explain it but i was like bro this dude is like this is amazing like it was just amazing i felt like i was getting washed on some and i played the album and I was just fucking crying, bro. I don't know why the fuck I was just like driving. I was like, this is like intense. It's like, it's honest. It's real. It just felt like you could just feel that shit. And that's why Kanye is so amazing, man. Kanye always does that shit to me. Even on his last album, Yay, when he put it, when Ghost Town and Violent Crimes, the don't you go up in a hurry, bro. Like he always hits me somewhere where it's really like emotional and just, just fucking raw, man. That's why I love Kanye. Well, you so, know, yeah. he's got that, uh, that new album coming out soon, yeah. right? Yeah, Donda. I mean, I'm excited. The thing about it is, like, initially, sometimes with his albums, I won't be as, um, I won't be as like attached to it. But then it's I'll come slow back. Burn. To it. Yeah, slow burn. And then I'll come back to it and I'll be like, okay, wait a minute. This is, this is fucking good. This is fucking good. Maybe wait. I need to go back and listen to Jesus is King. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. You should go back and listen to it. And like, and and yeah, honestly, I think you would like it, bro. Musically and like just the energy in it is is very fucking raw. So yeah, Jesus is king. That's Jesus is king, right on. That's that's your answer for what are you listening to now? <laughs> all right, two more. Logic or Ableton? Ableton, bro. Ableton. All of it. I'm an Ableton freak. I wish I could do Ableton. I only do Logic, but Ableton, you can do so much more. It seems like. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. All I all I know is Ableton, right? So um it's like my only it's my only form of yeah that's home yeah it's home yeah so i've been, I've been on ableton for like what like four or five years now so that's just that's all i know but i would love to give logic a try we were talking hey, about this. yeah let's give each other lessons on the two yeah can you hook me up <laughs> yeah bro i got you <laughs> hook me up i'll pay you bro hey well, we can just we can trade you know you help me do logic or ableton i'll help you do logic like you know how to use Ableton though in our session. Not really, bro. not really. <laughs> no, like the most basic. But uh-huh. uh anyway, let's get to the last one. It's uh your not so obvious inspirations. What would people not know Ethan Ardalan absolutely cherishes when it comes to any kind of art, really? It doesn't have to be music. Honestly, bro, like what gets me really inspired is just um and I don't know if this is like a right answer, but I, I love like moving to a new place and just starting from fucking ground zero and like building up, building my world out there. Kind of like, you know, how I went to Vancouver, like just going out there and creating my world like that. Those type of experiences are the most like inspiring, um, growing, like in general, like I think just, I mean, the, the cliche answer is traveling, but if I'm going more in depth, it's going to a new place and, sitting down for like a year and trying to create the life out there is that that's the stuff that really gives me a lot of energy to um to grow and just like constantly create like i just need new i need new experiences like i don't give a fuck sometimes i'll become so stale like creatively and not have any inspiration so i need to go like i just be impulsive and be like yo i'm just gonna go drive here like you know go somewhere different or hit up this person that i haven't talked to in like a minute and let's just go out for a coffee even if it feels like uh, god damn i haven't talked to this person for like forever and i'm just kind of anxious like i just gonna be awkward i'm like and nah, i don't give a fuck let's go in and it'll be chill like you know what i'm saying like those type of things just um just new experiences bro like that's that's the key definitely that's the i don't know if that i don't know if that's the out of out of the ordinary inspiration though no man that's great that's great um 
I was originally thinking, you know, an answer like art and artistry, but it's so true that there's something very uh, inspiring about being dropped off in a completely new environment where you don't know anyone and you have to start from ground zero because you really get to uh, learn more about who you are. I think that's just as, if not more inspiring than, you know, listening to a favorite album of yours. Mm -hmm. So that's a great, great answer. Because a lot of people will take it as like, oh, I'm scared. Like, I don't know anybody out here. But it's kind of like that. I like the challenge of like, you know what? I got to go out. I got to talk to people because I don't know anyone here. Like, I got to make a connection. And just like creating that new connection with someone or being like, okay, cool. I, I, like, I met that person. We had a great talk. That was like a really real, um, like, I genuinely was interested in hearing about their life. And just kind of genuinely connecting. That shit is just so fulfilling, you know? Like, meeting new people and just connecting on a deep level and being like, yo, it's love. How you doing? Like, you ever need anything? I got you. Like, obviously if you meet someone new, you're not going to like be all like, Hey, you're my best friend, but it's kind of just genuinely being there. Like, Oh, cool. It was great to meet you. Thank you for like allowing me to talk to you. Like it actually made my day a lot better speaking to you, but not everyone makes your day a lot better. Sometimes it's fucked up people that are not all great, but like when you get those great people, those good people, that is, um, that's the most, that, that definitely, that's the most fulfilling thing for me. Oh man, well, you are one of those great people, and I that's why I wanted you here on the first episode of On That Note. I really appreciate you coming in, man. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to see each other in person real soon. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Honestly, it's an honor to be the first guest on this show. I don't, I know this show is gonna fucking blow up, man, and then we'll get they're gonna look back and be like Parker's first episode and they'll be like yo what's up guys this is the first episode i know it's popping i know park is huge as a motherfucking <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but seriously i appreciate it so much thank you so much for having me um and i know you're gonna do i know you're gonna do amazing things bro you're you're a fucking superstar as well bro so it's all love thank you hey right back at you bro thank you again i'll see you later man Life.